How you tune in to My Disney Brain? This is Kelly, your host. Thanks for joining us this week. This week, we're taking a deep dive into the history of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. In 1969, Disney announced five theme resorts for the project's first phase. Two of them opened on October the 1st, 1971. We know them today as Disney's Polynesian Resort and Disney's Contemporary Resort. Early concept drawings of Disney's Polynesian Resort featured a 12-story tower. About 1970, the site plan had evolved to a more architecturally authentic village layout, much of what remains today. Incredibly, construction began in 1971, less than eight months before the first guests were scheduled to arrive. Disney's Polynesian Resort and Disney's Contemporary Resort were designed by Wed Enterprises, now Walt Disney Imagineering the California architectural firm of Welton Bacon & Associates, and, of course, United States Steel Corporation. Each was built with a unique process called unitized modular construction. To help learn more about the hotel business, Disney leased a Hilton Inn South in Orlando, Florida, which opened May 1970, and they used the 140-room hotel as a living laboratory. They developed everything from training manuals to restaurant menus and more, and of course, they later used it for their own resorts. The remaining Phase 1 resorts, inspired by Asian, Venetian, and Persian motifs, never made it off the Imagineers' drawing boards. The Polynesian, however, opened with its iconic Grand Ceremony House lobby building and 492 guest rooms, which were divided among the eight guest longhouses. These original buildings were named Bali High, Bora Bora, Fiji, Hawaii, Maui, Samoa, Tahiti, and Tonga. And the rooms ranged in price from $29 to $44 in 1972. Between the longhouses were clusters of lush tropical vegetation, and there were meandering paths paved in what seemed to be volcanic rock. Throughout the grounds, you could hear gentle lulls of that romantic island music. White sandy beaches stretched along the north side of the hotel along the lagoon between the Polynesian, the Transportation and Ticket Center, and the site of the future Grand Floridian Beach Resort. A marina was recessed into the approximate center of the hotel with a dock that extended out into the lagoon for guests who were wishing to access other parts of Walt Disney World via motor launch. A loud and colorful marriage of early 1970s designs and traditional Hawaiian elements dictated the room furnishings, carpet patterns, and of course cast member costumes for the Polynesian in the first decade. This was immediately evident upon entering the Grand Ceremony House where the green and the turquoise tiles of the main lobby competed with the two-and-a-half-story atrium for one's attention. At that time, the atrium was home to a mini island of rocks, waterfalls, and lush vegetation that generated enough atmosphere to hold most guests spellbound for the first several minutes upon entry. Adjoining the great ceremonial house was the Outrigger Assembly House. Previously, this was the home of the Papiti Bay Veranda and several arrangements of shops that had been remodeled since the opening days. Polynesian original restaurants were the Papite Bay Veranda and the Coral Isle Coffee Shop. Later, this was called the Coral Isle Cafe. This was supplemented by the Taboo Lounge, Captain Cook's Hideaway Lounge, and the Barefoot Snack Bar. The Papiti Bay Veranda was a French colonial restaurant that served breakfast, lunch, and dinner with nightly floor shows. It and most of these locations survived into the early 1990s. Shopping options were also available at the hotel. The Polynesian Princess, Robinson Crusoe Esquire, Village Drugs and Sundries, Trader Jack's Grog Shop, a.k.a. Trader Jack's Grog Hut, and News from Civilization. And none of these institutions exist in their original state today, but some remnants have carried on bravely. Among the services that were available at the resort, there was the Village Floors, the Pretty Wahine Beauty Shop, the Ali Nui Barber Shop, and the King Kamehameha Concierge. In keeping with one of the very first concepts of the hotel, the first swimming pool was constructed as a hidden grotto with waterfalls and a slide built into the surrounding rockwork. The original pool was demolished and rebuilt for a reopening in 2000, and a larger body of water and a larger volcanic rock focal point exists today. The resort's first signature entertainment production was the South Seas Luau, 
was initially presented on a small open-air stage right on the beach. They are subject to the unpredictable Central Florida weather. And in 1973, the fully sheltered Luau Cove opened with a whopping 500 guest seating capacity, and it enabled the show to go on nightly year-round, regardless of the mild winds and the rain. A more exotic water element never made it to a regular operational state at the Polynesian. There was hopes for a wave machine. This was championed by then Operations Chief Dick Nunez and intended to provide breakers capable of sustaining surfers. That's exactly what it did when it was completed finally. Unfortunately, the waves eroded the shoreline near the Luau Cove and the machine was permanently retired. It later became an artificial reef. Another aspect of the resort has been much change in the range of watercraft. There are a number of boats and small watercrafts that can be rented and operated by guests. Gone are the days when as many as eight people could pile into a 80-foot Polynesian war canoe and take off across Seven Seas Lagoon towards Rio Island. The Polynesian was home to a floating cocktail lounge. It was called the Eastern Winds. It was normally tethered to the dockside at the hotel's marina. It was a real boat. It included a deck, a cabin lounge, staterooms, and even lovely serving hostesses. Sadly, the eastern winds didn't manage to float its way until the 80s. The first enroachment on the resort's territorial boundaries, and hence its intimacy, came in 1978, when 144 rooms opened in the new longhouse of Oahu. The Tangaroa Terrace restaurant was also added, along with the snack bar, Moana Mickey's Fun Hut, and a second swimming pool. This east side expansion added a little more traffic to the hotel, but it was arguably pragmatic response to the growing demand for higher occupancy and, of course, a greater range of services. It was a feeling of solitude with long, unhampered and mostly uneroded stretches of white sandy shoreline stretching away from the hotel in two directions. There were 217 more rooms added in 1985 and what was most likely the hotel's final growth spurt. With the longhouses of Morora and Pago Pago added east of all of the existing structures. This addition reduced the amount of beach space between the resort and the transportation and ticket center. A few years later, the construction of the Grand Floridian Resort caused the Polynesian's territory to be more clearly staked out. The more recent wedding pavilion, just past Dual Cove to the northwest, also set the tactical boundary. Since the mid-1980s, several rehabs have served to update the hotel's general appearance. New shops and restaurants replacing the old originals. The Neverland Club, a Peter Pan-themed childcare facility, was also added to the south end of the Tangaroa Terrace building. And carpet designs have been removed. The rooms remodeled and cast member costumes are now a few shades less extravagant. Altogether more unisex and hence a little less wonderful. The lobby remains impressive, but has a more busy feel to it than in the early years, with promotional setups for things such as Disney's Vacation Club occupying previously open floor space. Now today, the Polynesian is a lot less remote hideout and more of a connected part of the growing Walt Disney World Resort. It remains extremely popular and no matter what has changed, comparatively engaging. The warm breezes flow through its palms, now carrying echoes of earlier years off into the distance, where ghosts from Luau's past congregate regularly by torchlight and drink my ties to the memories of old outriggers and ankle-length flower skirts. Well, today, guys, Disney's Polynesian Resort is an 840-room resort located on the shores of, yes, Seven Seas Lagoon. It is situated directly south and two monorails stops from the Magic Kingdom. The Polynesian occupies 39 acres, and it is styled as a South Pacific paradise, complete with beaches, tropical landscaping, waterfalls, and yes, bamboo tiki torches. The great ceremonial house is still the center of the resort, serving as both lobby and focal point of the area. The Polynesian is a Disney deluxe resort, but the atmosphere is very casual and it is very family oriented. Thanks for hanging out with us this week. That's a quick look back into Disney history, the Polynesian Village Resort. I hope you've enjoyed that. We're going to come back many, many times over and go through each and every resort, each and every attraction. So please subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. Thank you and have a magical day.